So Polar Seals, it's time for our art lesson. And uh, as you know, we're going to be carrying on thinking about sketching and developing our sketching skills, just as we have been doing over the last uh, four weeks. Um, and I'm gonna share my screen with you now so you can see what we're focusing on today. OK, so we've been looking at these teddy bear sketches over the last four weeks. And um, can you remember what we've noticed about the way that these have been drawn? Have a look, have a think. What have we noticed about them? Did you remember that we'd noticed the different kinds of lines that our teddies have been drawn from? They've used thick lines and thin lines. And if you look carefully, there are parts of the teddies where the lines are thick, like the outlines, but there are also parts where the lines are very thin, like the shading that you can see within the outlines, very thin, fine lines. We've noticed how in some places there are long lines that have been used, and in other places there are short lines. So again, the, the outline of the teddies uses long curved lines, but lots of the shading inside the teddy outline is made with short lines. Sometimes those short lines might be very close together, and sometimes they might be further apart. They're trying to show the short hairs that you might find on, on a teddy bear. So long lines and short lines. What else have we noticed? Oh, that some lines are straight and some lines are curved. So with the shading, we've got quite short straight lines here moving around our teddy bear's paw. But with the outline of his paw, it's a long curved line, isn't it? So very different kinds of lines for different types of shading and for outlines as well. So let's look at the next screen. We've practiced that, haven't we, in our shading grid. So uh, three weeks ago, you made a grid like this one where you were practicing creating those short flicks, the kind of lines you might use for shading in fur on a teddy bear. We use those crisscross lines called cross hatching, where you drew lines in one direction going diagonally across your box and then going in the opposite direction going diagonally the other way and you made them crisscross over one another to make a kind of uh, grid pattern. Um, some lines were close together like these short flicks and some lines were further apart. We used curved lines and we practiced making those and zigzag lines like these. We made dots and patterns with those and so on. So we've practiced those different types of sketching techniques. You can see some more over here in this example. So last week you used them to complete your teddy bear outline, didn't you, in this sketch? You chose which kinds of lines to use and you made some beautiful teddy bear sketches um, last week. Certainly in school, we made some lovely ones and I'm sure you did at home as well. So today, what are we thinking about? Well, in our lesson today, I'd like you to use your sketching skills to sketch other kinds of toys. Now, in school, we've had a delivery of old toys from the um, from the town museum. We've got a box full of old toys. Some of them look a bit like this. We've got old metal trucks and cars. We've got old teddy bears and cuddly toys like this dog here. We've got old wooden toys like this boat and this wooden spinning top. And we're going to be sketching those in school today. And what I'd like you to do is see if you can have a look around your house and perhaps you can find an old toy that you could sketch. Maybe have a chat with mum or dad or someone else at home and see if they've got any toys from when they were children that you could borrow and sketch. 
and we'll use our sketching skills to help bring our pictures to life. Now, how would I go about sketching one of these toys then? Well, I've chosen this truck to sketch. You know, when Mr. Hunter was a little boy, he had a truck like this. It's an old Tonka truck. Now, what would I use? What would I do to begin with? Well, when I'm sketching, the first thing to do is to draw the outline of the truck. So I'm going to start here. So you start with the outline of the item that you're sketching. So I'm starting at the very left hand side of my object. There's the loader at the back and it goes up and then there's a kind of roof that goes over the cab, isn't there, of the truck. I'm going to try and draw that all in one go. The shape of that loader. And then it slopes up at the back, a bit like that. And then the next part I'm going to draw is the um, engine cover and the cab where the driver would sit. So the engine cover starts here, doesn't it? I'm going to go down first and then as it goes down, it comes forward and then there's a big arch shape where the wheel goes. It's a little bit forward from that. And then the front of my truck comes around like this. I'm doing my best to try and do it with the mouse on the computer. It's not easy. It's much easier to do it with a pencil. And there it comes around. Now I need somewhere for my driver to sit, so I'm going to draw the cab next, which starts a little bit further back, starts kind of back here. I'm sorry, that's a bit slopey, isn't it? That's not the best, but we'll do our best from it. So that's the shape of the cab, and then there's a window for the driver to see out, and then there's another window a little bit further forward. OK, now what have I forgotten? Oh, my truck's got no wheels at the moment, so I'd better draw those in. It's got big, chunky wheels, hasn't it? So I'm going to make sure my wheels fit inside the wheel arch. Sorry, they're not very round, but they're the best I can do with my computer mouse. And here's the one at the back. And in the middle of the wheel, there's a round hub. OK, so now let's look at some of the patterns and the shading techniques that I'm going to use. Well, I can see there are lines, there are long lines that do make a sort of pattern in my truck here. I think that the, the back of the truck is actually split into sections and it looks very rusty so I'm going to use some dotty shading to show the rusty spots on it okay so what will I use? Oh, I can see. I think I need some sort of short lines, maybe close together along the top edge of that loader because that it's got scratched and rusty, hasn't it? So I'm going to have to shade very carefully along that top edge with some short lines together. And further down as well, there are some dots of rust and longer lines where there are scratches in the paint as well. Look here, there's some rust coming up from underneath as well. So I'm going to use some short lines there. As you can see here as well, look, there's some dark patches of rust that I'm going to sketch in with my pencil. OK, looking now at the wheels. Well, these have got patterns on, haven't they? So I think my wheels They've kind of got a a 
a sort of shaped pattern on. They look almost like long rectangles, don't they? So I've got some long, longer lines, not just dots, but longer lines that show the thick, chunky treads on the tires. Okay. And I could do some shading in there, couldn't I? I could actually shade the tire in and then leave the middle lighter where the hub is. Let's put a dark dot to show the very center of it there where it's dark. And that would be shading in. You'll be able to do it much more carefully than me. And if you can see there, there are some little pipes sticking up so those are going to need drawing in the long straight lines i think they're the exhaust pipes from the engine and oh, we've got a line going across there haven't we where the engine cover bends up a little bit and some rust at the front of it and so on this part's dark isn't it here it's a black plastic front so i need to show that being a different colour to the rest of my engine cover. Well, I made a start there, as you can see. So what did I do? Well, I started with the outline, didn't I? And then I filled in any patterns that I could see using some of the kinds of lines that I need. I didn't use many curvy lines, although I did need them on the tyres. But I did use lots of longer straight lines where there were patterns in the truck and uh, the way it looked. And then I used some of my shorter lines, some closer together, some further apart where there were spots of rust. So whatever you draw, you'll need to begin by looking carefully, then starting with your outline on your page and filling it in using some of the sketching techniques that we've learned over the last three or four weeks. So I hope you enjoy searching out some interesting toys to draw. Um, and I will look forward to seeing some pictures of the sketches that you've done. Email them in to me. Um, I'd love to see them. OK, so enjoy your art lesson and I will see you tomorrow.